In this fourth video in the basics series for bagpipe beginners, um, I'm going to be talking about content that roughly corresponds to the uh, materials presented in chapters three and four of the Highland Bagpipe Tutor Book published by the National Piping Center in Scotland. And again, this is what this book looks like. Okay, it's a blue spiral bound book, A4 sized. Um, in the first three videos, we reviewed the practice chanter, how to hold the practice chanter, where to place your fingers and your hands on the practice chanter, and your correct posture for playing. And we also went up and down the basic bagpipe scale from low G to high A and back down again. Now we're going to talk a little bit uh, more about what the music actually uh, is, how it's represented on the page, and how you can uh, learn to r begin to read music if you haven't done so before. Um, we're very lucky as bagpipers in that we, we really only deal with one, what's called a clef, and that's the treble clef, also known as the G clef. Um, so we've only got nine notes to, to learn, although we do have um, a number of, um, of technical things to learn uh, along with those nine notes. Um, so again, it's not easy, uh, but with a little bit of diligence and perseverance, you will master this. Um, so let's begin at the beginning. Um, if you I'll hold up this page for you, and you'll see that um, our entire scale is written here on what's called a five line staff. And you see this symbol right over here on the far left side of, this, of the, the staff. And if you, if you were to look really closely at that and think about it, what you come to realize is that that symbol is actually a very highly stylized G, and that that little curly Q at the bottom of that G, or that symbol, actually rests on the second from bottom line of the staff. And that second from bottom line happens to be where the note G sits. So it's actually very convenient for us pipers, because if you're reading the, our music, you start on that line, which corresponds to the, where that little curly Q is right here. That's the first note on our instrument, low G. And if you work your way up the staff, up those lines, the next space up is our low A, the next line is our B, the next space is our C, the next line is our D, the next space is our E, the next line is our F, the next space is our G, our high G, and the next space is our high A, or next line, I'm sorry, is our high A. Now, you may notice there's like a tiny little line through the very highest note on our scale. And that's because it's as if we're drawing a whole additional line just for that one note. But we wouldn't want to do that um, because that's the way music works. <laughs> so we don't have six line staffs, we have five line staffs. And in this case, we have a five line treble clef G or G clef staff. So we need to draw a tiny little line through that note in addition to simply raising it above the, the five line staff to clearly show that it's not a high G, it's not that high G, it's a high A because it actually belongs on the next almost kind of imaginary line above the staff. Um, that's all the music theory I'm going to give you for now because the really nice thing about this page in this book is not only does it give you the um, all of the notes on uh, the staff um, going, at least in this case, going up, it also gives you this really cool device on the second part of this page, on the lower part of this page. And these are called mnemonic uh, devices to learn how to identify the notes. Uh, and in this case, the notes, they, first they give you the notes uh, on the lines and then the notes in the spaces. And um, musicians have used this kind of thing for, for you know decades and I guess hundreds of years to try and memorize different notes and different sequences of notes. And in this case, you're talking about uh, the one, two, three, four, five notes in the lines, and the notes are G, B, D, F, A, and your mnemonic is good boys deserve fun always, okay? Same thing for the notes in the spaces. So the very first 
note in the very first space you encounter in our scale is the A. So it's A, and then the next space up is C, next space up E, and the next space up is the high G. And the mnemonic for that is all cows eat grass. So just to show, show, show you that, that may or may not work for you. Um, but what I really especially like about that mnemonic device is it actually acts as a separate little exercise. So in addition to the scale, which we now know going up and down from low G to high A, okay, and then coming back down from high A to low G, And you can practice these nicely and slowly, just like I played them. And those are those are fantastic things to practice up and down the scale. But you can also do what I call two note scales. And you can base those on these mnemonic devices where you're reading basically every other note on the lines and then in the spaces. So for that first line, the G, B, D, F, A, good boys deserve fun always, your two note scale would be. Once again. And your other two note scale would start then uh, on the first note on the first space, the low A, A, C, E, G, or all cows eat grass. It's pretty unlikely um, that you're going to be playing an awful lot of bagpipe music uh, that involves playing uh, simple scales, uh, one note to the next, or something like that, or any sequence uh, that might break more than two or three notes in a row down going in a scale fashion, um, scale-wise fashion. It is more likely that you're going to be playing a lot of bagpipe music where you're basically using every other note. So you're going to be doing exactly these two note uh, technical exercises when you're playing this music. So they're, they're actually really handy. And when you get really good at them, they will help your overall technique as you go forward. So in addition to practicing your basic scales, you may want to adopt a practice of the two note scales as represented here again on page seven of this tutor book. It really does come in handy uh, down the road. One more word on practicing scales. Feel free uh, to make it interesting for yourself. Um, so you don't want to simply go up and down the scale, up and down the scale, up and down the scale. <clears throat> Certainly you're going to want to pause wherever you're having some issues. So you might be having issues getting from B to C because there's that forked fingering you have to master. So when you're going up the scale, you may want to pause on that and play it a few times. Likewise, when you get go from D to E, which you saw before, is something that can be pretty treacherous, and you really have to work hard to get uh, cleanly from D to E and back down from E uh, to, to, to D again without creating a, a crossing noise. Likewise, high G to high A, where you're again creating kind of a forked fingering there. You're dropping your ring finger down on this hole and lifting your high A finger. Okay, hopefully these will give you some techniques that'll help you and keep practice interesting for you. Good luck.